grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for today's message is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 13, verses 44 to 52. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, the Gospel lessons for the past couple of Sundays have involved Jesus' teaching by using parables. We've had the parable of the sower and the parable of the weeds. Today we hear Jesus teaching his disciples by using three more parables. Three more comparisons about the kingdom of heaven. I would like you to think for a moment about your most treasured possessions. Are they living things or inanimate? Why are they so valuable to you? Would you be willing to give up your treasured possessions? And are your treasured possessions earthly and temporary, or heavenly and eternal? In the first two parables today, we hear about hidden treasure and a pearl of great value the first parable. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. The kingdom of heaven is like. The kingdom of heaven, the ruling activity of the Lord, the love, mercy, and grace of Jesus the forgiveness of sins and salvation through Christ's sacrificial life and death, and the promise of eternal life with the Lord through his resurrection. The kingdom of heaven is like, is compared to, treasure hidden in a field, treasure hidden in a field. What's the most treasured possession that you can think of that is hidden from people today in this world? Did you think of the gospel? The good news of Jesus Christ? How many people don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior? All of sinful mankind has walked right past the hidden, eternal treasure of forgiveness of sins, salvation, and eternal life. In our sinful nature, we blindly stumble along and don't see Jesus as our Savior from sin. But thanks be to God that he has given us his holy word and revealed the hidden treasure of Jesus and the forgiveness of sins. We continue. Which a man found and covered up. Found means he was looking. Covered up means he made sure it was kept safe. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. In joy. In joy he gives up all that he has. Are you willing to joyfully give up all earthly, temporal, treasured possessions, the lesser things, for the greater treasured possessions of forgiveness and life eternal? Or are you stuck in your selfish, me first, mine, my way or else, sinful pride and arrogance? too stubborn or blind to see the great hidden treasure of God's riches of forgiveness and life through Jesus? You and I cannot buy our way to heaven. Forgiveness can't be purchased. Salvation isn't for sale. Eternal life isn't earned. Christ Jesus bought us back. He redeemed us. He paid for our sins. 
Christ was willing to give up everything, including his life. And we should eagerly, willingly, joyfully receive God's grace. The treasured possessions of forgiveness and salvation and life through Christ. Through the love of the Lord, the kingdom of heaven is our treasured possession. The second parable is, is much like the first. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it. Notice again in this parable, there is searching and finding. Effort is being put forth to find the treasure. And the one pearl of great value is found. Notice it says one, not many. There is only one of great value. Christ Jesus is the one pearl of great value, the only Savior from sin and eternal death. No one or nothing else on earth can compare to the great value of the only Son of God. All earthly temporary things are to be counted as worthless, easily given up compared to the eternal value of God's love, mercy, and grace in Christ Jesus. You and I have been redeemed, bought back by Christ's blood. Our sins are forgiven. Salvation and eternal life are ours. Through the grace of God, the kingdom of heaven is our treasured possession. The third parable compares the ruling activity of the Lord, his love, grace, and mercy, through the forgiveness of sins and salvation in Jesus, and life eternal to a fishing net. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. Again, notice the work being done. The net is thrown. The fish are gathered. The love of God, Christ Jesus, was sent for the forgiveness of sins and life eternal for all people, fish of every kind. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God so loved the world, so that Christ Jesus, the net, is thrown and gathers all. So does that mean all people will go to heaven? Unfortunately, no. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into containers, but threw away the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus is quite clear here that there is a separation between the good and the bad, the evil and the righteous. And that separating is going to be done by God's angels. It also states that the separation for the bad fish for the evil will be hell. The fiery furnace with weeping and gnashing of teeth. So who are the good fish and who are the bad fish? First of all, remember who is doing the separating. It's not you, it's not me. God's holy angels will do what God directs them to do. And second, the good and the bad are called the righteous and the evil. And we all know that none of us by our thoughts and actions are righteous. We are all poor miserable sinners who only by God's love, mercy, and grace have been gifted with Christ's righteousness by faith, a gift from God. 
The Lord has taken our sins and in exchange given us his righteousness. God's plan of salvation has made it so all people may be righteous through the gift of faith in Christ Jesus through the word. Through the mercy of the Lord your God, the kingdom of heaven is our treasured possession. The epistle lesson from Paul's letter to the Romans reminds us of God's plan for us. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. God knew us before we were. And before there was a was, God mercifully predestined us to be with him through his gracious Son, as his dearly loved, called, justified, and glorified children. God has chosen all believers to be saved. But those who reject Christ as Lord and Savior will be separated and suffer eternally. Our comfort in this world is in God's promise of the love of Christ, the forgiveness of sins, salvation, and the promise of life eternal, the treasured possessions given to us by our loving God. As St. Paul writes, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? No. In all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through the love of Christ Jesus, we have been given the eternally treasured possessions and are united with him. The Gospel lesson concludes. Have you understood all these things? They said to him, yes. And he said to them, therefore, Every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house, who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. Jesus checks with his disciples to see if they understood the parables, and then adds another. Jesus compares the scribe, the teacher of the law of Moses, who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven. Trained for the ruling activity of the Lord, trained for the forgiveness of sins, trained for salvation, trained for eternal life. To a master of a house, the holder of great treasure, who brings out, shares, what is new and what is old all the treasures within the house. As his treasured disciples, we are to make disciples of all people by using all of God's treasure, his word, his law, his gospel, the Old Testament and the New Testament. So what does all of that mean for you and me? As the Old Testament lesson tells us, for you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession. We are God's treasured possessions. 
And he sent his one and only son, the treasured possession, to suffer, die, and rise again for the world that we might possess the most valuable treasures of forgiveness of sins, salvation, and life eternal. As his chosen children, we need to understand the great value, the treasured possessions that we have been given by Christ Jesus. And then place those precious, eternal, treasured possessions above all earthly things. You and I, as God's treasured possessions, have freely been given the treasures of forgiveness of sins, salvation, and life eternal through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. We are his dearly loved, completely redeemed, fully forgiven children. He is the one of great value. Our treasured possession for all and forever. To God be the glory. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.